You've heard of Murphy's Law, right? What can go wrong will go wrong. Well, last week, I experienced Sullivan's Law. What is Sullivan's Law, you ask? Well, that's the law that says Murphy was an optimist. You're entering the wind tunnel. No spin, no bull, just jack. This week on Wind Tunnel. I work really hard for everything that I have and every opportunity that I have. So um, sometimes the emotions come out in me, like like moments like that. But it's uh, it's a new week, that's for sure. After St. Pete, I was like, wow, I chose a super competitive sport to be in. So. It's a kind of a love-hate relationship there because every time I go out, I know I'm going to be I'm going to be sweating it and giving it my all. So they interviewed me the other week at South Boston. I told them, I said, guys, look, whether you're a Peyton Sellers fan or not, whether you want to see Peyton beat Tony or see Tony, you know, send Peyton out of the grandstands, you know, come watch it. It'll be a show either way. Wind Tunnel is brought to you by Advance Auto Parts, the official auto parts retailer of NASCAR. Here's your host, Jack Aroot. Welcome back. Wind Tunnel's one-week vacation was planned to go inside with NASCAR's week off over Father's Day. And that allowed me to celebrate my youngest grandson, Jason's high school graduation. It was the first time since COVID where we all could gather in person and celebrate. But then, upon my return home, I took a nasty spill while covering the Weaver Brothers Construction 125, a Whitcomb 5 event at the Claremont Motorsports Park, and proceeded to break two ribs. The ribs, well, they're healing, and I'm back at it. And hopefully, you'll agree that this week's episode was worth the wait. Father's Day meant that Cup and Xfinity took the weekend off, but the Camping World Truck Series took to the Iowa clay of the Knoxville Speedway for the annual running of the Clean Harbors 150. Green flag is in the air. We are racing at Knoxville. Moves the bar comfortably out front. Look at John Hunter Nemechek send it in on the inside, trying to get by Friesen. Who's oh. Friesen? Going to lose all his momentum, lose all the track position. Easy. Grip on the outside, and he makes it happen. Todd Gillen back to the lead. Todd Gilliland comes back to the truck series for one race to race for his dad. David Gilliland for the first time, and he will take it to victory lane at Knoxville. You know, these DGR guys prepared me a really good one. This, uh, my dad literally called me Monday afternoon. I was getting lunch. He's like, man, you want to run this truck race? And I was like, absolutely. So, um, you know, we got fit in a seat on, on Tuesday afternoon, and but just an amazing truck, man. These, uh, these guys work so hard, and um, you know, the 17 truck's been really fast a lot this year, so finally get it a win. Um, I think they're close to the, the playoff, um, owner's playoff deal too, so hopefully it helped them a little bit, and um, I'll be anxiously watching the rest of the year now. I feel like a little part of me is going to stay in this truck. There was also plenty of NASCAR Advanced Auto Parts weekly action, and for that update, here's Lenny Baticki, host of PRN's At The Track Show. Thanks a lot, Jack. This is your NASCAR Advance Auto Parts Weekly Racing Series Report. We'll start at Monadnock Speedway in New Hampshire. Justin Bonsignor parked his modified there in victory lane. Lee USA to Scott Watts. Andrew Moore in Victorious at Hudson. And at Claremont, it was Ben Byrne. Justin Zeitner, a winner at Adams County at Iowa. Alaska Raceway Park to John Clam. And Sammy Smith wins at Michigan's Berlin Raceway. Bobby Wilberg and Zach Riddle splitting the wins at Madison International in Wisconsin. Lacrosse to Bill Shot, Derek Ramirez victorious at Cedar Lake. Central Missouri to Jeremy Lyle. Dan Alama back in victory lane at Colorado National. Oregon's Coos Bay to Jesse Williamson. Joey Braun victorious at New York's Riverhead Raceway. Up in Canada at eastbound it was Wayne Walsh, while Dustin Momberkett got the checkers at sunset. Elko, Minnesota, Jake Ryan and Chad Whalen splitting the victories there. Dakota Gruchala victorious at Washington's Evergreen Speedway. Florence Motors 
Speedway in South Carolina to West Burton. Riley Gentry getting the victory at Greenville Pickens. Bowman Gray Stadium in North Carolina. Jonathan Brown and John Holloman victorious in their modifieds. Wake County once again to Brandon Clemens. Mike Sweeney back in victory lane at Jennerstown, Pennsylvania. The same for Brett Cressley at Grandview. Kingsport Speedway in Tennessee to Chris Van Dyke. Kern Raceway Park in California to Jace Hansen. Cole Holman wins on the Salina High Banks in Kansas, while at Lakeside it was Kevin Anderson. Mike Looney doubles him up at Motor Mile into Virginia. Langley to Matt Carter. Connor Hall getting it done at Dominion. Lima Motorsport, Lima Land Motorsports Park in Ohio to Jeff Kaz. Jonathan Gomez and Tim Farner win at Idaho's Magic Valley Speedway. Meridian goes to Josh Vanapolis. Bobby Good victorious at Florida's New Smyrna Speedway. Rockford, Illinois to Max Clare. Tom Scully Jr. on Father's Day weekend, a big big victory for him at Seekonk. Tucson Speedway in Arizona to Nick O'Neill at That's Your NASCAR Advanced Auto Parts Weekly Racing Series Report. Thanks for having us on, Jack. We'll see you next time. Saturday night also saw the start of Season 2 for the Superstar Racing Experience, better known as the SRX. They were at the Five Flag Speedway in Pensacola, Florida. Two laps to go for Castro Davis. Elio is cruising. Bubba Pollard is trying to get that second spot from Ryan Newman. This is the battle that we're going to have to watch to the end because there's no shot any of these guys can catch Elio unless there's a last lap activity. <laughs> White flag, Elio Castroneves, one lap away from an SRX Series win. While Pollard and Newman continue to fight side by side for second, two more corners to go for Castroneves. Oh, Bubba Pollard just came up. A little bit on Ryan Newman's left front there. That was wild. Checkered flag and a win at Five Flag Speedway in Pensacola in the SRX Series for Elio Castro Neves. The four-time Indianapolis 500 winner is a winner in the Superstar Racing Experience. This is fantastic. You know, uh, what a great... Thank you, SRX. Everyone, everyone here is just ab did absolutely amazing. Tony, thank you so much. Hawk! Hawk and I had a bat winning the race. He would have fined me one race in NASCAR, right? Right, Rock? Right there, Hawk. He's right here, anyway. But what a tough crowd. I mean, these, these guys here are so competitive. So it was super cool, man. Uh, running, running side by side with my team, uh, my brother, actually, Tony. And uh, I don't know what happened to him. But in the end of the day, yeah, so I worked really hard to get in the P1. So we got it, man. <laughs> this weekend, SRX heads to South Boston Speedway for their very first event there ever. And the short track ringer will be NASCAR short track national champion Peyton Sellers, who, by the way, will be stopping by here in just a few minutes. He and I will unpack his game plan for his SRX outing, and you will learn why he feels it is so important for him to go to victory lane. Ryan Priest is another short track superstar, but in his case, he ascended to the very top rung of NASCAR when he campaigned a JTG Doherty Camaro for a couple of years at the cup level. But when JTG scaled back to just one car this season, Priest was released. He signed on as a reserve driver at Stuart Haas Racing. When he visits, you'll get a look at what his SHR duties are and why he believes that he needs to win in order to return to cup. 20-year-old David Malukas is a rookie in the NTT IndyCar Series. The Chicago-area native is part of Dale Coyne's Chicago-based two-car IndyCar effort, and he's embroiled in a tight battle for Rookie of the Year honors. And he's shown a great deal of promise in his performances through the first half of this season. We'll unpack his rookie campaign, as well as learn about two of his secret ambitions away from racing. So tighten up those belts because we are about to hit the gas right here inside the wind tunnel. First up this week, fans of the Indianapolis 500 here in Chicago always have their drivers to support. They'll also have someone local to root for in 2022. For Burridge native David Malukas is a rare Chicago area entrant into the iconic open wheel race.
Hey, car lovers, at Advance Auto Parts, we have what you need to keep your car running all season long. So if you enjoy getting ahead of the curve when it comes to taking care of your ride, Advance Auto Parts has everything to keep your ride on track to reach the victory lap. Because you can trust the team at Advance Auto Parts to assist you in finding what you need at the right price. Stop by Advance Auto Parts, where you're always number one. This is how we advance. Hey! Welcome to Season 2 of Wind Tunnel. There have been those from Chicagoland who have done it before, including 1930 pole position and race winner Billy Arnold, who is from Chicago, and the Bettenhausens of Tinley Park. Tony, Tony Jr., and Gary all took part in the greatest spectacle. Malukas now joins that group, having qualified for the 2022 Indianapolis 500 in his first full year in the NTT IndyCar Series. Here's your wind tunnel host, Jack Aroot. Well, we've talked about it a lot here on Wind Tunnel, the banner crop of rookies in the NTT IndyCar side of things. And I'm pleased to have making his very first appearance on the Wind Tunnel podcast, David Malukas. And uh, David, uh, you picked a hell of a year to decide to chase for Rookie of the Year titles in IndyCar. But I can't recall as great a crop of rookies as the class of 2022. Welcome. Uh, yeah, thank you, uh, first of all. But, yeah, no, I mean, I joined a very intense year, let alone just the sport I chose. I chose such a competitive sport. I mean, inside, outside of the rookie competition, everybody's just so good. And, I mean, yeah, I'm pushing 110% just to, to get the most out of the car. You alluded to the fact that this is your choice. You decided to choose this discipline of racing. So when it, what went into that thought process? Well, I mean, I mean, I started when I was seven years old in go-karting and, you know, at that time I didn't think anything of it, just, you know, having fun at the go-kart track with my, with my dad and then never took anything seriously. But as time went on, you know, we kept going, kept going, we fell in love with it and we didn't realize it then, but we were addicted already. Um, and, you know, we, we just kept going up the ranks and I ended up winning my, got my first win. And, and from that point on, I mean, there was no stopping us. We were going to go all the way till the end. And fast forward and it wasn't until I'd say about 2015 is when I realized like you know I we're going full fully into this and, and I want to make it all the way to IndyCar you know anybody in any sport when they start at a very young age they can suffer from myopia and what I mean by that is far too many sacrifices in real world items in events because you're so focused on what your ultimate goal is how did David Malukas and his family navigate through those type of rough waters? Well, yeah, I mean, my parents were fully committed to me. So, uh, you know, being the only boy and the youngest child, I was definitely the most spoiled. Uh, and Oh, come on. Yeah. <laughs> I'm the oldest of seven. You're the youngest. My youngest sibling, he got everything that I never got. So I, you're not going to gain sympathy from me. Okay, well... But I mean, they they put their all into me, you know. All the, all, I mean, so much money, so much time. They they, I mean, put it all into me. And from my end, you know, it's like I can see how much effort they're putting in, and I only want to return that favor. And of course, I also love the sport and, and want to achieve my dream. So it was kind of you need to make sure that on both ends, that from my parents end and from my end, we both wanted to, to get this done. And we had to make a, a lot of things. You know, for my parents, like I said, they had to make a lot of commitment. And for me, I had to quit a lot of other things. You know, I, I left uh, I left public school. I was homeschooled. Ended up going to Europe and lived there by myself in places like Germany where I didn't even speak the language. And uh, I, know, I mean, I went there when I was like 13 years old. So 13 years old by myself trying to like, you know, live. You know, I'm used to just my mom being there and always leeching off of her like, okay, clean that, feed me this, feed me that. And then all of a sudden I get sent over there and now I'm like, wait, how do I, I have to live? Which um, at, at 13 years old was actually very helpful. I think I matured quite a bit in the, in that period. And I mean, yeah, along the way had a, I mean, lost a lot of friends because I wasn't at school anymore. And, you know, it's just uh, putting a lot of effort into go-karting. You know, I, I, I played many different sports and did many different things and, and hobbies and, and kind of ended up quitting all of that just to, to fully focus on, on racing. Too many people focus on the success and don't really pay attention to the journey that it takes to get to even where you are now about to embark on a long and illustrious professional career at the highest level of open wheel racing. So I wonder, 
in those moments, whether it was while you were alone in Germany or while you were climbing up the ladder, did David Malukas ever have to sit down and remind himself that while the cost was high, the rewards were going to be even greater? Yeah, there's definitely periods, you know, uh, where I mean, many times along along the path where, uh, you know, it's like, man, you know, it's, you know, my parents are struggling quite a bit to, to get all this done. And there's a lot of pressure on me. Like, man, do I just want to be a normal kid and just, you know, just biggest problem is how to ride my bike to school and and just not have to worry about all of this. But uh, I've we've I've spoke to my parents about that so many times along the way. And we every single time we always came to the conclusion that it's so, so worth it. And even if we tried to get away from it, we're like I said, we're just so addicted to the sport, to everything around it that we just can't get away from it. So, yeah, it, it's definitely it's it's a rough and bumpy ride. But I mean, I think that's what makes it the journey. And, and now, you know, being an IndyCar that much better is just looking back. I want to talk a little bit about a term that is used a lot in uh, in racing, and that's, you know, polishing one's racecraft. Racecraft is kind of what you do to get to the point where it becomes embedded in your muscle memory. So from your perspective, as you've moved up the ladder, and now that you're in IndyCar, where are the areas that you really want to put your laser like focus on and what elements of the racecraft do you think you have, have, have much room for improvement? It's everything that's come new to me this season in IndyCar with pit stops and tire strategy and fuel saving. I mean, these are things that I haven't done my whole career, um, you know, with driving and, and reaching a car to its maximum, you know, I can do that. I can, I, I, I learned it, you know, after, you know, let's say St. Pete. And by the, I think by the time we got to Long Beach, I realized how to push the maximum of the red tires and get the most out of it in qualifying. Uh, but it's just the racing part, you know, that's, it's also very new to me, these long races, tire stints and you know for because in my perspective it's like hey we need to save fuel we need to save tires all of a sudden i start losing positions and in my mind i'm like no this is bad we're we're going backwards but you know i need to kind of understand that you know we do a pit stop we come out and all of a sudden i'm ahead of all those people again and you know we've just gained like six positions so it was kind of trying to get used to all of that and like learning more into how all the strategy works and talk with my engineer so on track i can kind of make those decisions as well, because they're kind of going off of my feedback. And, you know, if my feedback's not good, then we might make the wrong decision. So the last couple of races, it's been definitely getting better. But in my rookie season, that's been the hardest thing to, to kind of grasp. I Yeah, definitely. hundred percent. Yeah. I, uh, any, any little mistake I'll make, I'll definitely critique it like hell. And Luke Varley kind of, he's my coach slash therapist slash kind of everything. He's always been with me. And, uh, he always tells me, he's like, now you got to just stop dwelling on these things. Like, you know, it's, it's, they're going to happen. You know, nobody's perfect and you need to move on. But from my end, you know, it's if, if I just feel like I need to dwell on it so I don't make that mistake again. 17 races in a season. And for a rookie season, uh, I've always been of the opinion that the first half of the year, you deserve the term rookie. But at this point, as we get ready to embark on the second half, you aren't a rookie anymore. Do you feel that? Yeah, you kind of hit it right on the nose. Uh, yeah, going into these these last, especially after the month of May, I mean, there was so much testing and, and you know, you, you do the 500. I definitely don't feel like a rookie anymore. And, you know, going into these races, I'm definitely understanding everything that's going on. I'm not, you know, getting all nervous, just going into first practice and, you know, how everything works with all the timing and, you know, learning the respect of the other drivers and how they do things. I've finally kind of gotten a swing of all that. So I definitely... Yeah, definitely. We've we've surpassed the, the level of rookie. David, take me inside your race team, because one thing I remember when when Dale Coyne used to arrive with a stock block Chevrolet in IndyCar competition, towing it on an open trailer. This guy is a racer through and through successful Chicago businessman. But what is it about being part of Dale Coyne racing? That unless you are part of it, you don't know. Well, you know, for for me, it's it's amazing because I'm I live 20 minutes away from the shop. You know, I can always stop by, and and the most important thing in racing that you know not many people talk about, I think, is the chemistry that you have with the team, and from the mechanics to the engineers to to my coach and, and the managers, everybody. It's just it works so well. It's such a friendly team. 
And I knew I had to go with Dale Coin rest, Racing, especially for my rookie season, as soon as I did the first test, because I was so nervous. I mean, IndyCar first time, I'm overthinking everything. And they just, you know, they made me, they made it feel like home. And they just said, listen, it's just another race car. Uh, just go out there. It, it's, it's no big deal. And from that point on, I knew it was definitely the, the best way uh, for me to go, go forward in the season to, to stay calm. And I mean, as the season's gone on, even with Takuma Sato as my teammate, the just everybody's bonding so well with each other. And it's just a blast. We can finish last. We can finish first. I, I, I just don't care. I'm having so much fun with the team. You brought it up. Having Taku, a two-time Indy 500 champion, as your fellow driver on the team, um, it's got to be an incredible resource for you to drill into. So how pestering are you of your fellow driver, whether it's a new track or an old track? How much do you try to wring out of Takuma in terms of knowledge so that you can be better? Yeah, I've uh, yeah, definitely any chance I get, I'll always ask him a question for even like the most slightest things. But he's been very open. I, I mean, he's he's given me so much more information than I was ever expecting. And he, he now I feel like we, we kind of have a trust with each other. We can try different setups with the car and our driving styles are actually very similar, which is just works very well. So I can, you know, with the short two practice sessions that we have, I can do a different change from him. And I can give him the feedback and with together we can make a decision. So by the time qualifying comes, we've made a big step with the car, you know, and I think that really showed in Detroit. I mean, we, we both of us managed to make it into the fast six when in practice one, we weren't really there, but we just really worked with the, with each other and the team to, to get the car where it needed to be. And I mean, especially in the ovals, he just has so much knowledge. Like I just watch his video and I'm like, wow, like he is just everything he does. You can just tell it's, it's thought of it's planned and it's, when for me in my perspective, you know, something's happened and I kind of just go off of, you know, reaction instead of thinking and just do, you know, that's kind of what Yoda said. So I'm just using Yoda's knowledge, but I try to get everything out of him, um, but he's been so helpful. I still think he's keeping, you know, little tips and tricks to himself, but I think every driver should, you don't want to give all the cards away. Well, you got to squeeze them. You got to squeeze them. Remember yeah. <laughs> like he, like he preaches no attack, no chance, exactly. whether it's trying to get knowledge or out on the racetrack. So, do you embrace no attack, no chance at this ultimate level? I mean, you have to, especially for qualifying. I mean, in Detroit, I've never pushed the car harder than my in my life. You know, those laps I did to get into the fast six, I was pushing the limit, leaving no track, no room, and you know, it was just enough to to get us up there. And it truly just shows, you know, how competitive this sport is. You know, if I didn't push turn five all the way to the wall, we would have lost two tenths and that's it. We wouldn't have made the first group. It, 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 so, and that's what I realized. And, you know, after St. Peter, I was like, wow, I chose a super competitive sport to be in. So it's a kind of a love hate relationship there. Cause every time I go out, I know I'm going to be, I'm going to be sweating it and giving it my all. We have a great and very bright and long lasting future. Do appreciate your visiting with us. But before I say goodbye, tell me one thing, not racing related. One thing that is on David Malukas's bucket list, whether it's a place to go visit, just just one thing that's not motorsports oriented, because you spend, you know, 24, 7, 365 on motorsport. I got to figure there's there's something back there that you say to yourself, you know, if I ever get the chance, I want to fill in the blank for me. Yeah, I, uh, I have a big interest in um, I, I'll give two two answers. So when I was in England, I absolutely fell in love with with soccer or football is what they call it over there. And I've always wanted to go see a, a soccer game over there. I heard it's it's such a special kind of environment. So I'd love to go see that. But kind of stepping a, completely away from sports, I would love to, to go see, you know, the SpaceX facility. I really enjoy space and rockets and all that stuff. So I think uh, any exploration in that in that sense, I would I would love to go see any sort of museums or just seeing even the old Apollo rockets at NASA, any sort of space or maybe even seeing the sky with no light pollution, seeing the the night sky with all the stars and the Milky Way. I think that's uh, that's something that's definitely on my bucket list. I would love to do. Well, I think the Premier League and attending will be in your future somewhere, but I'm going to captain the campaign. We have to get you to space camp. All right. We'll let you like get the feel, put the suit on, everything else. Because you know what? You're really not that old. So you could masquerade as a young teenager just enrolling in in, uh, in, in space camp in Huntsville, Alabama. How about that? That would be very cool. I would, yeah, I would definitely take you up on that offer. 
All right, I'm on it. Hey, David, <laughs> thanks so much. Look forward to the rest of the season and cheering you and Dale Point Racing. Thank you very much. Thank you for having me. There's more wind tunnel headed your way after this timeout. Coming up after the break. Drivers, start your engines! Watch me. Here we go. Buckle up. The superstar racing experience is green. This place is fast. It can be mean. Final lap. Who will take the checkered flag? What a finish. A feature win. A dream come true. An SRX checkered flag. That's what this is all about. Superstar Saturday night. Oh boy, here we go. Oh, oh man, this is going to be fun. Come on. Woo! Who gets the jump? They're still bumping and banging. You're good, you're good, you're good. We're not done yet. Are you ready to light this thing up? Watch me. Race number two of SRX season two hits South Boston Speedway this weekend. And short track racers will be pulling for multi-time track champ and defending Advance Auto Parts weekly national champion Peyton Sellers at the Sobo Oval this Saturday night. Sellers takes a victory lap here on Wind Tunnel next. Hey, car lovers. At Advance Auto Parts, we have what you need to keep your car running all season long. So if you enjoy getting ahead of the curve when it comes to taking care of your ride, Advance Auto Parts has everything to keep your ride on track to reach the victory lap. Because you can trust the team at Advance Auto Parts to assist you in finding what you need at the right price. Stop by Advance Auto Parts, where you're always number one. This is how we advance. Man, this is for all those guys. Uh, there's a ton of them out there that, that are like me, that have won here and all these great short tracks around here. We can do it. We just need the opportunities. Today proved it. Yeah, it's a short track, but it's still damn hard to win here, and we did it. They are hometown heroes, drivers who put their passion on the line in front of their friends. Here we go, three wide, got Sellers up in the marble. Halfway home in this one. Off turn four, he heads for the checkered flag. Here comes Riggs! Riggs is back at it on the inside. Buckle up and hold on tight. Time now to focus the spotlight on hometown heroes with this week's Advance Auto Parts Victory Lap. Brought to you by the NASCAR Advance Auto Parts Weekly Racing Series. Driving local racing in local communities forward. Well, last Saturday night at Five, Five Flag Speedway, the uh, Saturday night superstar racing experience kicked off season number two. And for a while, we thought the Bubba Pollard was going to join Doug Kobe as an outside hometown cat to beat all of the veterans. Joining me now is next up in that hometown ringer category when the SRX series goes to South Boston Speedway this weekend to compete on Saturday night. He's Peyton Sellers. He's a regular visitor here in the wind tunnel. Peyton, I got to tell you, you look good in that black SRX suit. Absolutely, Jack. It's It's been a neat experience so far. You know, last year winning the Advanced Auto Parts Weekly Series National Championship, it kind of put me on a platform to be able to be the guy when they come to South Boston. So uh, really neat opportunity. <clears throat> I'm actually, you know, I was not really – putting a lot of thought into it. I was trying to take it easy. I was trying to, uh, you know, not worry about it too much, but the way bubble ran Saturday night, I'm like, you know, the pressure's on me. I got to carry the banner here for all. Well, what did, let me ask you this, Peyton. What did you learn watching at five flags, which is a different racetrack, shall we say, than Sobo is. So what did you learn that you think you can put into effect come Saturday night? You know, the intensity level was pretty high the whole race. These guys were racing hard. You know, they were not, you know, they were not tiptoeing around people. They, they laid the bumper to them, moved, moved by them pretty quick. So uh, just kind of seeing the way they drove the cars and they kind of, you know, they manhandle those cars a lot because I don't think they turned that great. I think they're kind of a bull in the china shop kind of car. You know, they got a lot of horsepower. They don't turn great and they're, uh, they're hot. You know, the common thing with all these drivers Saturday night was how hot these cars were. So, uh, you yeah, know, I think that'll be fine. I'm okay with the heat. You know, we're in here in Virginia, so I'm used to the heat and humidity, no doubt about it. So, um the thing for me, I race a Hoosier tire primarily, you know, most of the track we go to. Jumping on this Goodyear tire like the K&N series runs, I don't know how hard you can abuse it. I don't know if you have to, you know, let it let it cool off some before you go after it again or, you know, if it can, you know, if you can just kind of beat on it all night. So that's going to be the challenge for me. 
I think adapting to the horsepower weight ratio will be fine. And, and learning to race with these guys, there's no spotters. So the only thing you have in your ear is when the caution's out or how to line up. Um, a lot of the guys up north do that, you know, a lot without spotters, so dirt racing and stuff. So it's going to be a new challenge for me. But, you know, I know the track very well. I just have to adapt to the car. Well, let's talk about it, though, for a second. The cars themselves, purpose-built race cars, a little bit heavier than maybe what you are used to. But also the format is different, Peyton. And I don't know about you, but as I watch that, I started to look and I thought, hmm, Bubba, you made your move too soon. You got a TV timeout coming, a caution, or or as Alan Vestwick calls them, a fun flag. And it's still their timed events. Even that 75 lapper, you get down because they, you count the caution laps. So it, it's almost like you need to save your stuff until the last TV timeout. It looked like when they all fired off, they had a little bit different aggression level this second time. So they were racing a lot. They Side by side, went three wide for a while. So um, you're right. I think Bubba went a little quick, but he did get a tire and had to drive back to the front. So by the time he got back to the front, Helio was gone and checked out. Have you had a chance to drive them, or are they limiting it till the when you get there race day? You, you get you get about a 10 minute practice, and that's it. So it's going to be uh, all fresh for me. I did go to the shop. I had a media day with them. I got got to jump in the cars and try to get the seats fitted up and that sort of thing. And you know that'll help a little bit. But at the end of the day. It's going to be kind of a free-for-all there jumping in, trying to figure it out in a short time. Finally, after all your years excelling at the late model level, you understand what some of the protégés that you bring in as newbies into your race team, trying to marshal them along. Maybe you can get a little deeper appreciation for the uphill battle they face week in and week out. Exactly, exactly. I've been at their level, too. I, I've been around a long time and jumping to different series and different cars and different tracks. It's definitely, you have to adapt very quickly. Peyton, how important is it for you to uh, follow, not just in Bubba's footsteps, but let's face it. Uh, I think everybody was thrown for a loop when Doug Kobe, who still to this day is the only short tracker to win against these superstars back at Stafford Speedway. So how important is it for you to etch your name next to uh, Doug Kobe's as the, the, the ringer taking the title. So something I take a lot of pride in is being a short track racer. I'm not, you know, the fans have a hard time relating to Helio or Tony Kanaan or some of these guys because they're world renowned race car drivers, best of the best. They don't relate with good old country boys or, 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 you know, guys that work on the cars all night, wherever they're at, going to advance auto parts, buying their parts and working on their cars. That's stuff I do. So I feel like the fans relate to us very well. So I've got to go out there and represent every guy that races at every dirt track or every Stafford or South Boston or any track in between. I feel like I'm, I'm representing that whole nation of, of drivers and racers. You up to the task? I sure hope so. I sure hope so. Pressure's on. <laughs> hey, the uh, media day you mentioned that gave you an opportunity, I would think, too, to maybe uh, interact with some of these guys from Tony Kanan to Elio to, to Wild Bill Elliott, you know, all of them. Were there, were there any funny moments that took place? Because those commercial shoots, those TV shoots really can get long. And there's, there, there's a lot that gets, ends up on the cutting room floor. Yeah, it was, it was a full day of, of talking to people, you know, you know, different commentators and, you know, different angles and taking, taking the picture of 28 different ways and that sort of thing. So all the TV stuff will kind of bring it all together this weekend when people see it. But, you know, me and Bubba was sitting there looking at one of the cars they had on display and we were like, you know, you know, how's this thing going to drive in relation to our late models? He drives a super, I drive a late model stock. So how are they going to relate? Tony Stewart walked up and says, guys, get away from the car. Quit thinking about it. Just take it for what it is. Enjoy it. Adapt to the car and go fast. He said, the more you sweat about it and think about it and focus on it, the worse you're going to do. Listen, when you were in your EV chair, when you were in your easy chair, like I was Saturday night, and you heard that uh, all, all of a sudden, Connor Daly is going to talk to Tony Stewart at speed. Did it go, did it go through your head? Uh-oh, you know what? Maybe they're going to do that to me at South Boston. It's no telling what I'll able to say, you know? <laughs> yeah. Like, hold on a minute. Let me get through this corner. So I, I think I may have the secret weapon for you. I think after the first practice, you ought to spring for at least a dozen fried bologna sandwiches and then, you know, hand them out because most of those cats have never consumed a fried bologna sandwich. That's a staple at South Boston. You got to have it. So, you know, I actually, South Boston has been doing a lot of 
painting, freshening up, lawn care, different things. They, the place is really looking good right now. They've got two of their bigger events coming in over the next two weeks. They've got a, a $10,000 win race, 200 lap race, 4th of July weekend. That's the first leg of the Virginia Triple Crown that we do here. So the next two weekends for South Boston are big. And having this SRX race come to Southside Virginia should bring a lot of people in. They're, they're going to have a, a big crowd Saturday night. Um, they've got a lot of good things going, you know, with the drivers of this caliber coming in. It's going to be a neat opportunity. So, and I hopefully it brings a lot of publicity to South Boston. And, uh, you know, hopefully I can hold my own with them, no doubt about it. But at the end of the day, we're going to have a lot of fun. That's what it's all about. And listen, that is indeed what it's all about. But uh, go ahead. You can pinch yourself now and again to remind yourself that now you are part of the superstar category after all these years. But hell, everybody that sits in the stands in South Boston already consider you, Peyton, uh, a, a, a true superstar, a superstar they can sit down next to and talk to. So they interviewed me the other week at South Boston. I told him, I said, guys, look, whether you're a Peyton Sellers fan or not, whether you want to see Peyton beat Tony or see Tony, you know, send Peyton out of the grandstands, you know, come watch it. It'll be a show either way, whether you're a fan of me or not come out. Cause we're going to put on a show and that's what it's all about. You know, it's, it's uh, you know, I don't want to call it an exhibition race, but it's a lot of fun. Cause these, these are very high horsepower cars with not much tire on them. They're going to, you know, you're going to have to adapt pretty quick and learn how to drive this thing. Watch out for Paul Tracy. And no doubt, no doubt. Hey, Peyton, we're very excited for you. We will be watching, as I'm sure almost everybody listening to this podcast will. And uh, I think more than you believe, we'll be pulling for you, even out of the south side of Virginia, uh, because they're short track racers at heart, and they always love a good David and Goliath story. That's right. That's right. So, no, we're going to try to put on a show for you. Uh, it's been a lot of press involved in it. It's been a lot of exposure that I didn't know was coming. So, that's going to be a pretty neat deal. And to be live on CBS primetime Saturday night, it's a big deal. We wish you the very best, my friend. Go get that checkered flag. Thanks, Jack. If we win, I expect to be back on next week. That is a deal. You All got right. it. Good deal. Thank you, sir. You've been listening to the Advance Auto Parts Victory Lap, brought to you by the NASCAR Advance Auto Parts Weekly Racing Series, driving local racing in local communities forward. Coming up after the break. Ryan Priest fires off the 20, trying to win at Iowa. And $100,000, Ryan Priest delivers at Bristol. Doesn't matter what level you're in, if you're behind the wheel and you're racing, it is so fun to win. And he's going to take home that Gibson guitar. Ryan Priest wins at Nashville. Hey, car lovers, at Advance Auto Parts, we have what you need to keep your car running all season long. So if you enjoy getting ahead of the curve when it comes to taking care of your ride, Advance Auto Parts has everything to keep your ride on track to reach the victory lap. Because you can trust the team at Advance Auto Parts to assist you in finding what you need at the right price. Stop by Advance Auto Parts, where you're always number one. This is how we advance. Oh, Contact between Hosevar and Priest. Oh, he's got big damage. I told you oh, he's going to get they go. Hosevar oh. is around and the caution is out. Caution. All I'm going to say is that I race for a living, and if I don't run good, I don't make a lot of money. So I'm pissed right now. Um, and that's just stupid. It's just really stupid. Don't be like that. Well, he's been a frequent visitor here inside the wind tunnel. It's time for us to catch up on the pride of Berlin, Connecticut a fellow that's uh, been at the cup level and now has been signed on by Stuart Haas racing for 2022 as their air quotes reserve driver. We're talking about Ryan priest, Ryan, uh, you know, after a couple of years at the cup level, uh, you've uh, stepped back the kind of like the, you know, the lady in waiting, the miscongeniality, whatever you want to refer to it, but you're working hand in glove with a pretty stout Ford team in Stuart Haas Racing. So just how busy have you been? Busier than uh, than I would have thought going into this season. <clears throat> and one thing I will say, so growing up, when I was a lot younger, I used to watch Wind Tunnel, right? So it's cool to have the Wind Tunnel and, and bringing this back and, and doing all this. But 
So uh, as far as as far as everything I have going on, it's it's been busier than than I would have expected, and I feel like I'm busier now than I was before between um, the modified and and the super and and uh, trucks, Xfinity Cup, you know, and then simulation and all the other different roles that I play. Um, I've certainly been busy this year. Take the listeners a wind tunnel behind the curtain at Stuart Haas Racing uh, as the one of the key elements in developing the next gen car is simulator work. And you're the uh, so-called simulator pilot for the entire racing team. So how does all that work? Tell me a little bit about the simulator that you spend your time on. Yeah, it's different. Uh, It's different from most people who, you know, iRacing has definitely brought a, a great experience to, to your local racer, your fan that, that wants to get on there. And sometimes they can even race with us. Right. So, but mine's a, a lot different. It's created the tire, the aero side, the car, everything's created by the teams or the manufacturers. <clears throat> and, and then we input our setups for those cars directly. in. so it's, it's supposed to be very, or we try to get it as realistic as possible. And, and there's some things that, you have to keep on working on, you know, when, when Goodyear makes a tire change or construction change, that'll, that'll change the way um, we have to approach things and, and even uh, edit the tire model within, within the, uh, within the sim. So that's, that's far beyond me. Uh, I just, I try to give them feedback and and do different, different things like that. So um, it's certainly been an eye opening experience and, you know, you hear a lot of people talk about sim or simulation and being able to see it firsthand and, and experience it has definitely has been been awesome. How in your estimation do you think it's helped your racecraft? Well, that's a good question. And, and to be honest with you, it's um, my career has been a lot different from some of these other guys like Tony Stewart, or Kevin Harvick, where <clears throat> when they were coming up on the scene, they were able to go test. I hear stories of, of these guys when they weren't racing, they were at a racetrack somewhere on Monday, Tuesday or whatever it was, you were gone so often. Um, that's not the case. And that's never been the case for guys like myself. We've, I've only tested um, twice, uh, one and a half, well, really one and a half days, uh, one full day when we first changed the package in 2019 at Las Vegas. And then uh, half a day with Joe Gibbs racing in an Xfinity car at Charlotte. <clears throat> Um, so that's, that's about all the testing I have at at the NASCAR national series level. So when, um, when you have the opportunity to get in, get in the sim, so to speak, uh, it's, it's definitely, it's nice to be able to do that and, and kind of get those reps in, um, and, and find a baseline that works for yourself and that crew chief. You know, you look at the team that's over there at Stuart Haas from Gene to Tony to, to Zippy, to the drivers themselves. You have managed to uh, wedge yourself in to a team that is populated, I say, almost exclusively with true racers. Is, is, is there a comfort level of that? Because, look, since the age of about 12, you've been a true racer. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I like to think so, or, <clears throat> or try to be anyways. Um, it's definitely something I've been working on and and this is certainly a place that i'd like to to make a home right in the in the future to come so um it's all it's not easy it takes a lot of things and and hopefully all the all the pieces of the puzzle come together and and something happens but uh right now we're just trying to trying to put some of these wins together we've been we've been so close uh, a few times in the truck now and we've had really good speed in the xfinity car just just trying to you know, I haven't been able to work with these guys. So we're, we're trying to do, you know, a, a five or 10 races worth of work of finding a balance that I like in a, in a race and in, in three races. So it's not, it's not easy, but um, you know, we're up for it. And this weekend we, we have Nashville and in, in uh, the Hunt brothers pizza, number 17 Ford performance uh, F one fifty and, and the United rentals Ford Mustang in the Xfinity series. So that's two opportunities, a place that, brings back great memories from last year and really kind of put the heartbeat back in, uh, in my career. And, and hopefully next year or ne- next week, uh, we'll talking about a few wins. All right. I want to take you back and I, and I hesitate to do this, but it, it certainly, I think illustrated the true racer, AJ Foyt style. 
that Ryan Priest exhibits uh, the last few laps in Charlotte in the truck race and the post race interview. All you kids watching right now wanting to get to this level, don't do that. Race with respect. Don't wreck the guy on the outside of you trying to win your first race. It doesn't get you anywhere. All I'm going to say is that I race for a living, and if I don't run good, I don't make a lot of money. So I'm pissed right now. Um, that's just stupid. It's just really stupid. Don't be like that. Yeah, well, I mean, I meant what I said. I'm not I'm not going to change that by any means, but it's uh, that's, that's done. Um, you know, moving forward, it's... I, you just you, you you hope that that a situation like that doesn't happen with. But I have a lot of passion for racing. I, I've I work really hard for everything that I have and every opportunity that I have. So um, sometimes the emotions come out in me like like moments like that. But it's uh, it's a new week. That's for sure. Ed Christopher said the clock resets at midnight. Right. Hey, let me ask you this. It, it you have never quit on yourself in fact you have willingly gambled with your career on numerous occasions this time around as you just alluded to kind of in a good place but a place where no one is going to give you anything nothing's already been set in concrete you've got to prove yourself as a member of the team but then at the end of the season you got to have, I would think you and, and Heather got to have both fingers, all four fingers crossed across the board. It's like waiting yet again for the call. Yeah. It's no different from pretty much any time in my career, right? It's never been easy, which I'm totally fine with. It's, it's definitely helped me appreciate a lot of things and, and a lot of, a lot of the opportunities I do get. So, um, yeah, we just we got to keep digging along and and keep trying to trying to get to victory lane because ultimately it's like I said <clears throat> five years ago, winning fixes everything, and that's what I continue to try to do. And and um, but yeah, I I mean I have all the confidence in the world in myself. I, I know I can get the job done, and I feel like I've proved it over and over again when I have when I have all the um, all the tools that I need to 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 get it done. So that's uh, that's the plan. How about positive feedback from a guy that, oh, by the way, his firm happens to handle your career, your teammate, Kevin Harvick. He's a racer, granted, not from New England, but from the West Coast. But I think he kind of thinks the same way you do. So how do you two interact and what sort of good advice has he given you? Yeah, so it, it goes back to what I was talking about with that old school mentality. And, and Kevin was in that era of your Mark Martins and and your Tony Stewart's and, and all these guys, he, he raced against racers, what I like to call um, what a racer really is. And, and um, you know, we have a new generation coming in and I'm kind of like in the middle, middle of that generation, but Kevin and I relate to a lot of things when it comes to racing and, and how we, um, we attack our, our, how, how we feel like it should go and, and just, relate to different situations. So he's, he's definitely been somebody I like to lean on for advice or, or career um, advice or whatever it may be. He's, he's been around for a long time and he's definitely uh, got a lot of knowledge to, to share. And, and it's, it's been great having somebody like himself in my corner because without him, I, I wouldn't have the opportunities that I've gotten and who knows where my career would have been, you know, a few years ago or even this year. So it, it's been a great, I've always said, um, <clears throat> when I was trying to get that opportunity in Xfinity, I've always said, I just need somebody to, to go to bat for me and, and, you know, vouch for me and, and, you know, let me show that I can get the job done. So he's, he's definitely doing that. Listen, uh, hopefully you get a second Gibson guitar this weekend. That'd be kind of cool. Do you play the guitar? Yeah, man, I'm great. Yeah, right. Okay. <laughs> Next time you're with us here on Wintola, we're going to hold you to that. Listen, we wish you nothing but the very best at Nashville. Make it a double. Go back to back. And uh, we got our fingers crossed for the second half of the season. Not just one win, a number of wins so that you can get back in the conversation. 
but I will tell you, as your friend, but also as a follower, you never have left the conversation, my friend. And there is a bright future on the horizon for you. Thank you. Thanks, Jackie. You take care. Time to put a lid on this week, and I will do just that after you take this time out. Hey, car lovers, at Advance Auto Parts, we have what you need to keep your car running all season long. So if you enjoy getting ahead of the curve when it comes to taking care of your ride, Advance Auto Parts has everything to keep your ride on track to reach the victory lap. Because you can trust the team at Advance Auto Parts to assist you in finding what you need at the right price. Stop by Advance Auto Parts, where you're always number one. This is how we advance. Many thanks to my guests this week, and many thanks to each and every one of you for your patience and indulgence during my recent Sullivan's Law encounter. Make sure you come back next week, won't you, when I will take you again behind the scenes of motorsports as we return inside the wind tunnel. You've been listening to Jackaroot's Wind Tunnel. Wind Tunnel is brought to you by Advance Auto Parts the official auto parts retailer of NASCAR. Follow us on our social media, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and LinkedIn. And be sure to subscribe to Wind Tunnel's YouTube channel where you'll discover bonus content. I'm Lenny Baticki of Performance Racing Networks at the Track Show saying thank you for joining us today. See you again next week.